All right, who has got some success stories? And if you don't mind, we will bring a microphone. We had a technical difficulty tonight, and our computer system is not work. Or what do you call it? the uh, the online system for people to uh, uh, join us online is not working. So we're going to videotape tonight, and then they'll be able to go to a link and still get it. So we want to make sure everybody's heard uh, properly. So uh, uh, Harold, do you have microphones back there? Okay, bringing them out. All right, who has uh, the first success story about some prosperity? Who received something unexpected? And it doesn't have to be money. Remember, prosperity is many, many things. Okay, sorry, he's coming to you in just a second. Yeah, oh, well, and you're sitting together. Oh, they say birds of a feather flock together. <laughs> right here. There you go. And then maybe we, um, you can hand that other one to Michael on this side. He's going to share something in a minute. He doesn't know it, but he's going to. <laughs> go ahead. Ooh, mine makes me feel nervous and a little emotional, but. Good, good. Yeah, yeah, so I'm feeling it. Good. But it was, I, I told you one thing, but there was a couple things that happened. Yeah. The, the first one, like you said, doesn't have to be in money. It was my neighbor who goes, um, dinner's on. Are you home? And she brought dinner over to me. And I was like, wow, that's awesome. Thank you. You're right. And then, um, then a lady I know that goes to church here asked me, hey, can you do this thing with my computer? Sure. She gives me 50 bucks and the computer is that I can have to donate to somebody else after I fix it. And I was like, wow. What? And, I mean, this is, there's been like four things. And then um, I had lunch with my family, and that night, uh, Monday, my sister comes over and gives me $200 cash because they know I'm out of work right now because of my knee I'm recovering and everything from right. my surgery. And right. I was just at 8 o'clock at night, and they live in Winter Springs, and I live near the airport. I was like, she goes, we want to come over for a minute at 8 o'clock at night and to give me $200. And I was just like, what? <laughs> right. <laughs> you right. know? And um, then last night, my mom called me for a minute, and I was fixing to go to a class, and I only had a second. She goes, I go, is everything okay? And she goes, yeah, I just wanted to ask you if you want me to pay your rent. And I said, y yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the answer is Yes. Yeah, but the, it was the weird thing was when I told you, I, I kind of had a question in my mind because I kind of thought no for a minute. Sure. And I thought to myself, and I, my question was, is there ever a, a no answer to a gift when you feel like, I, I, don't, I don't know, like, there, like, like maybe there's a string attached? Okay, yeah, great. So let's give JJ a hand. That's awesome, huh? <laughs> Woohoo! So I want to address your question, though, because it's a good one. So um, remember how I said, and it may have been last week, you know, the universe always says yes. So if you say there's not enough, the universe says you're absolutely right. And if you say there is enough, the universe says you're absolutely right. So, um, so when you're doing this affirmative work and you're living in abundance, you're living in possibility, and you start to see things show up, you realize you're a powerful co-creator. So that's the first thing. So it is important, especially during that time as stuff's coming to you, to say yes because it's like that's part of the flow. As you say yes and receive, then you can give out more, and that continues the flow. That's why the yes is important. However, having said that, are there times if somebody's trying to give you a gift that it's appropriate to say no? Oh, of course, absolutely, especially if the energy's funky around it. It's too, like uh, there's a problem and they're trying to say, I don't know, I'm going to use this term, buy you off, like with a thing. Well, then, yeah, I mean, that's an appropriate time. So as with always, you want to consult your heart, consult spirit. But because of the work you're doing, that was such an instant manifestation. I'm glad you said yes, uh, especially if there are issues around family members, because family and money can be tricky. Raise your hand if you know what I'm saying. Okay. You know, um, I have seen families that I thought loved each other, and then somebody dies and leaves money, and they turn into, you know. So, so, um, so it's always good to ask your heart, is this the right thing to do? But then we trust spirit's guidance, you know. From, from, so I think it's great you received. I think it's great you received, um, and especially when, again, you're in this. So, so it's like, I, here's, here's a, a thing I think about. Like, I'm living into my yes. Right? I'm living into my yes, and my yes is there's enough for me. So if something comes toward me, my answer is yes. And I want to give you an example, too, that's not money at all. 
um, I often have worked, found myself working with and supporting um, ministers in school. And um, I'm sorry, I didn't know my phone was on. That's embarrassing. Um, I'm sorry. I never have it in here. Um, and I was working with this gal, and she um, was really praying for opportunities to do messages. And so we're praying one-on-one with the, uh, one another, and she's saying, I really want to do messages. Well, then this church calls her to do a message. They say, can you come such and such Sunday? And she says to them, I have to pray about it. And then she came to me and said, now, what do I do? I said, what do you do? What are you, I said, are you seriously asking me this question? Like, I love you, but what are you thinking? And she said, what do you mean? I said, we have already prayed about it. This is the manifestation. This is the yes you've been waiting for. And you said, I'm not sure. Call them right now. This meeting is over. You call them and you tell them the answer is yes. How many dates do you want me to put on my calendar? Like, here is the answer and you're still going, I don't know if this is God's will. I mean, it's at your doorstep. It couldn't be any clearer, right? So, so when we're praying for all this stuff and it shows up, boy, talk about being in confusion, right? And, and she was just a sweet gal trying to, you know, like all this was new. Like she wasn't used to like focusing on something and, and happening. And I'm telling you, this is, I help people manifest. It's just something I do. I, I can't explain it. I can't explain it. Like, I also know people who, who, like, manifest certain things. Like, I have a friend, like, he manifests trips. He just thinks about going to Europe and somebody offers him a trip or says, do you want to lead a trip or whatever. I think about going to Europe and that doesn't happen. <laughs> you know, I think about, my gosh, how much is a ticket going to cost, right? But he, this friend of mine, he thinks about it, he manifests it. But there's something in him that has an immediate yes to travel, right? So living into your yes is like... So, J.J., I'm using you as an example because they're wonderful examples of, um, and you're also in a situation with your knee. She just had her knee replaced. And so not only is there a need or and a desire, it's like um, this, is just, this is just what life is offering you right now, right? And you're taken care of. You're, you're financially secure and all that. But, but, like, there's a need, and so you're saying there is enough. You're showing up for yourself, and the universe goes, here you go, here you go, here you go. So to say no to that, then the universe is going, wait a minute. I'm confused. Right? Which way? So, yes. So live into your yes. Maybe you can use that. Live into your yes of whatever you're affirming. It's like you work as if that's happening. Right? Also what JJ's doing, I'm just going to tell on you a little bit, she's coming into the church. She can't work, but she's volunteering at the church almost every day. So where is her energy coming? Well, it's coming to her place of spiritual nourishment. So... The universe delivers on that. Like people think sometimes, well, you talk about tithing because it's good for the church. I say, I talk about tithing because it's good for you. The church is taken care of. If you're taken care of, well, it's obvious that you want to give to the church. I don't have to make you do it. As a matter of fact, I won't ever ask for money. So, right? It's, so I'm saying she's a being in the flow. Her behaviors are a yes. I can't, I can't work at my job, but I'm working at my place of spiritual nourishment and what's happening more, do you see what I'm saying? It, totally. Yes, yes. You cannot be in this vibe daily and not heal and grow. It's not possible. I know you do. We're proud. We're, we're parental and proud. That's wonderful. And, uh, yeah, to lead us into tonight, great. Michael, do you have anything you want to share? I do. I, it, yeah, I feel like I could be like the poster child for the change that can come from just attending two or three prosperity sessions with Alice. It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. I mean, it's sort of remarkable. I, I think it's remarkable. So I was telling Alice, I started shifting my thinking. You know, one of the lessons was around shifting your thinking around thinking about prosperity. Uh -huh. And so on December 28th at the Sunday service, you know, I hear, oh, there's a prosperity class. So I immediately started thinking, you know, that sounds like a really great idea. And I started focusing on that. And just a real quick story about a, sort of a little bit of a financial burden I had recently for the last, over the last year is I have a small commercial building in Sanford. And right as my tenant was leaving, they started this street beautification project, and we're going to have the street torn up for months in front of it. So I knew, you know, there's not going to be any rental can come, and I've got, you know, this mortgage to pay. So months and months and months, over a year goes by, no income from this building. And so literally... Just after I started the shift in December, I get this call from my realtor who says, 
hey, there's somebody really interested in the building. I'm like, really? Fantastic. At the same time, I find out that there's a, Sanford, a City of Sanford facade grant that will come and help you with you know, making your building look better. So the day that I came for the first session on January 6th, before that, I went to the City of Sanford, and they gave me 900 bucks towards helping paint my $1,800 painting project for the little building. So they split it with me. I'm like, wow. So I come here. The next morning after attending this session, the first session, I get a call. It's like, come up, meet. They want to sign the lease. And they gave me a check for over $2,400. And I was like, what? You know, I was like, this is absolutely crazy, right? And so I, that starts happening. Then some really cool, like, some smaller things happen. So last night I was at dinner with a friend, and I was totally planning on taking her to dinner. She says, oh, I happen to have a $20 gift certificate for this. Let me help you pay. I'm like, really? Today I'm in a coffee shop, and I walk in. I said, you know, this is the first time I've ever been here. It's really a cool, it's a cool place. They're like, oh, really? It's your first time? The coffee's on us. I'm like, wow. And so those are just, like, crazy examples, right, of just stuff that continues. Oh, right. This weekend, I was talking to my mom. She's like, you know, we need to work on this project on the house. Do, can I help you with that? Same thing. Can I help you with that project? I'll give you a few hundred dollars. I was like, wow. I mean, it's just really amazing. I right. And so what, like, what shifted? Right. These are all the same people in all the same places. Yeah. yeah well, I'll tell you, it, it was a shift in my thinking. Yep. Right? Um, funny, before we ever got to the thing about volunteering, after the first session, I walked up to Alice. I said, hey, Alice, by the way. My firm, like the company I work for, gives me three community service days. I would love to donate them to the church. So we've been working on some projects, and, and here we are. It's like, wow. All right. Amazing. Isn't that amazing? And you see, it's like little things here and there, and it's like, it's like letting you know, okay, yes, you're on the right track. You are in contact with the universe. Yes, the universe is hearing you. Yes, that when you, when you really do these things, the answer is yes. I'm just making sure you hear. So it's like spirits going, here's another one, here's another one, here's another one. And if that hasn't happened to you yet, don't worry. Don't worry. It will happen. It will happen. Some of us are getting uh, awarenesses in other ways. So let's have Pat next and then Britt, okay? So let's get you the microphone, Pat. There you go. For our, for our people who will be listening on the video. Um, I work part-time at a uh, school, and they called me this morning, and they said, can you come in? And I said, no, because I was having a repairman came, come. And then at, uh, they called at 8 o'clock and said the repairman couldn't come. So then I called work. Anyway, I went in. <laughs> and um, the, there was a woman there today uh -huh. giving a, um, telling about her program. And they recycle things from uh, hotels and motels. Uh, and they make little packets up, exactly what we put in the uh, backpacks that survive to thrive. Oh, great. And I asked her if um, it was a possibility that we could get them. Super. Well, that's some prosperity for our church. And what did she say? And she said, we do give to different charities. Great. So... It's something to pursue, but it just happened that I was there today. Just so happened. Yeah. Just so happened. Aha. <laughs> uh -huh. Have you ever said out of the blue? Yeah, it isn't actually out of the blue, right? It's because of the consciousness. And remember, the feeling tone, remember what we learned about energy, right? Like energy wants to join with like energy. Remember how we, it's like on a, on a, um, on the invisible level, like at the level of the, the, the uh, subatomic particles, that remember even in experiments, the actual viewer of the particle changed its property. So, and then other, other things joined with it that, was, that were like it. So that's how energy operates in all levels. So what you're doing when you're working with your thoughts and when you're saying your affirmations and you're doing your prayers, it's like you're collecting all these little uh, random uh, particles and going, focus. You know, so it's it's the focus that you're creating that's helping. Yes, go ahead, Britt. Okay. Well, mine. I've definitely had the prosperity, abundance, um, money things here and there, but this one is um, a more physical one. Um, on the day that we were doing the forgiveness one, uh, the I, I re re I relabeled the the days because they they were as if it were talks on Sundays. So I redid them so that it was like Wednesday, whatever. Anyway. Okay. Okay, so I didn't know that this was going to be that day. So um, 
I regretted something that had happened um, where I spoke too soon and I was really beating myself up about it. Um, we were um, at dinner and I felt a migraine coming on. Like I could see the sparkles. And um, Keisha asked if, if we should leave right now and go get some medicine next door. And migraines really scare me because they, like, they knock me out for, right. you know. And so I was scared, but I said, no. I said, this is what I want you to do because we had just gotten our food. I said, I want you to send love to my brain right now. So then I closed my eyes, and I sent love to my brain, and I said, it's okay, you're safe, you don't have to beat yourself up, I love you, you're okay, it's all right, I send you love. The migraine went away on its own, and I did not need Advil, I usually take four when I have that coming on, Uh and forgiving myself was a huge part of that healing, so that was awesome. Wonderful, wonderful, right? That's prosperity in the healing modality of the body. I'm glad you mentioned it. I'm really glad you mentioned it, especially if you have kids, uh, grandkids, nieces, nephews. Work with them. Um, you know, tell them they have super healing powers because the kids get this stuff. And, and what you did, and is she, is she not a perfect youth and family minister for us to have, right? I mean, I can see you saying to the kids in the classroom on a Sunday about healing, did you know you had super healing powers, right? And, and it, with my son, there's been like um, several different things that have happened uh, physically. One, and they were, he was with me on all of them. <laughs> so I'm going, okay. One where he fell and um, I thought his elbow was broken, you know. And I, and I took him to the doctor, and he had what's called nursemaid's elbow. It's where, like, your elbow's like this, and they cannot move it. And the only way to get it back into place is to, you know. And after two tries, I said, no more. I said to the doctor, uh-uh. No, you're not touching my son again. And then I said to him, is it possible that it could go back on, it, on its own? He goes, possible? I mean, I said, I just want to know if it's possible. Like, don't tell me. I just want to know. And he said, and he said, it's possible. I said, all right, we're going to leave at this point. So then we go home, and um, we're supposed to go over to um, his Grammys, his Dorothy, <laughs> to his Grammys. And anyway, um, he still wants to go. I mean, that's been an upsetting day and all that. So anyway, we go over there, and, and on the way, I said, I want, here's what I want you to do. I just want you to keep talking to your body, keep talking to your body, and you tell your body it knows what to do and where to go, and all the bones know the right places, to be just talk to your body so we're sitting there and all of a sudden we're on the couch and he goes and we hear it go like that and I go I said was that your arm and he said yeah I said is it okay and he goes yeah and we'd already called the chiropractor and we go over there the next day and the chiropractor was so thrilled he wasn't gonna have to he said it's back in place it's back in place so he working with his little body got his arm back in place. I won't go into all the other stories, but I'm saying that's how powerful we are. Huge. Go ahead. Um, Okay, so um, I'm constantly working with uh, developing boundaries and, you know, codependent stuff. And so um, someone wanted to meet with me to discuss something, and they, they kept pushing for a certain day, and I said, in my mind, I'm like, oh, I don't want to meet on that day because that is the, like, that's the day I spend with my family. And, and I was, and I typed the message, um, okay, we can meet this, whatever it is, this, this day of this week. And I'm like, I just felt like my whole body, like, oh, and I, and I was about to hit send. And I'm like, wait a minute, <laughs> this person wants to meet with me. Like, I think I could have the power to say that doesn't work for me. Yes. Let's see what happens. So I erased, delete, 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 delete the whole (laughs) message because I hadn't sent it it yet. So then I said, you know what? I don't like to meet on that day because that is the day that I spend with my family. Uh Uh-huh. But uh, how about this other day, whatever. And um, I sent it. And within five minutes, the person responded and said, okay, how about 115 on that day? And I was like, oh, 
So that was step one of like, oh my God. Ah. That's like huge. It sounds so little, oh, but no. it's so big. It's Raise so your hand big. if you know what she's talking about. <laughs> right, right. And why? Because, you know, we want to we wanna be loved. We want people to like us. It's hard to stand up for ourselves. These are wonderful stories. So that was the step, that was step one in, you know, I can do this. Yeah. Step two is, Later that day, I got a phone call asking if I could, um, it, was a, it was a babysitting opportunity that came up on, like, right at the time that we were supposed to meet. And Very they fun. were like, you know, I'll pay you 50 bucks for, you know, and I'm like, ha, ah, here we go. And ah. I get paid for it. Hey, so it is. Well, I, this is, you brought up another important point. All these stories are important teaching points. Okay, I'm going to say, remember what I said about the word yes? Um, the word no is my new yes. Why, why is that so? Because your no to them was a yes for you. The word no is my new yes. In other words, I'm not going to give myself away to the point that I have no me left for me, that I have no me left for my family, that I have no me left uh, to get rejuvenated and really be, uh, be in my own aliveness uh, uh, for the planet. And believe me, I, I get this one. As a minister, my whole, I have hundreds of people that think I need to be available 24-7. That's the archetype. That's what people think. That's the projection. So anytime you're in public service of any kind, teachers, same thing. And how about business people now? You're expected to work 24-7. It's not just ministers, right? It's everybody. So the word no is my new yes means sometimes I'm saying no to you, but I'm saying yes to me. Right? So I'm not saying always, always say yes, but sometimes the word no is your yes. Great. Wonderful story. Thank you for bringing that up. Any, anybody else too? Yes, and also on forgiveness work, anything. Let's see. We'll give this to Chris. Thanks. I was just thinking, mine hasn't been so much money, but a restoration of myself to myself. Mm -hmm. I've start, I've found, and I, I was sharing with Alice that it's just popping in, just like boop. All of a sudden, I hear, "You didn't forgive yourself for that. You've been carrying that around all this time." Oh my God! And like really quick, I go, "I forgive myself for that. I forgive. I really do. I forgive myself because it's it's like surprising. There's some stuff that happened in the seventh grade that I didn't realize. All of that was was going on for me mm -hmm. that I hadn't forgiven myself for." What it was was I, I was I got skipped a grade and I was supposed to do really well and I didn't do really well wow. and all the things that they put me in this school for so that I'd be really smart and, and behave myself and go to college. I didn't do any of that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Even know, though you are really smart. I yeah, mean I know but I mean she I, has her own I just you know didn't do all that stuff that right. I was supposed to be in this school to keep me, you know, right on that straight and narrow. And I did all the stuff that I probably, they probably put me in this school to make sure I didn't do all this stuff that I ended up doing later. You know, I got married at 17. I was like, out there, whatever. <laughs> so all of a sudden I realized, wow, I must have some guilt on this. I'm driving here tonight and I go, I had some guilt on this. I must have. Yeah. I've been dragging that dead rat around with me my, my whole life. Yes. Like, you know, I didn't do it right. And then this weekend, so I got th that just has made me like jump up and down. I was just jumping up and down with you before. This weekend I got in the car. Now last week I got real lost coming here. That took some doing. And then this weekend I'm heading for St. Pete Beach. Took me four hours. That's I so left my office and proceeded to get lost like I can't tell you. Huh. And it, so that gave me some time in the car to see who I was being. Uh -huh. And who I was being... You know, I thought about what we were talking about in the class. I thought about being centered in myself. Mm. I thought about that I wasn't alone, you know, because it's pouring down rain, and I'm just about to start crying. And I go, whoa, feel it. And I said, I don't feel alone, and I don't really feel scared, you know. And, and the GPS didn't work. The phone was dying. I mean, the whole nine yards. I'm thinking the things on TV where people are in the snowbank and their phone dies. So I unplug my phone, so I've got like 10% left, and uh, no candy bars in the glove compartment. You know, I could die out here on the highway. And, <laughs> but I didn't lose myself. Uh huh. And when I got there, I was so in touch with like what had been going on in my life and 
what I hadn't been facing, uh. I sat down and I actually was crying. But I wasn't crying because I was lost. Sure. I was crying because of whatever it was that, that I centered myself in to stay focused while I was lost, that it, it just all the stuff that I'd been pushing down just showed up and I knew it was part of this class. I knew it was part of being in the class and thinking about the things we've been thinking about in the class. So, to, so far, what is, I've gotten the gift of myself. Beautiful. Well, that's something that can't be bought. Yeah, that's, uh, that's, what, that's what we all want. That's what we all want. And if you don't mind, I'm going to kind of diagram a little bit what you said. Again, a very important story for what we're learning energetically. So I'm going to just pretend this is a, um, this is a, <laughs> this guy's really skinny, I guess. Um, I was going to try to draw a little body, but, oh, we'll make it a girl. There we go. And, um, well, I mean, since you just shared, you know. Okay, so, I, I, does that look like your hair? <laughs> okay. Sorry, we'll give her some hands, too. All right. Um, oh, we'll, yeah, this is a, she's got clothes on. Okay. Shorts. Okay. Okay, anyway, um, so when we're talking about energy, and you talked about something from seventh grade, all of us have these things that are really, really old. And what they do is they, you know, this is, if this is energy, like, so that's, that's the thing from seventh grade. Here's the thing from being a senior. You know, here's the thing from um, a parental, you know, disappointment or whatever. So... <laughs> With each thing, and when you cried, all this stuff got to go out, out, out. So what you're doing in, in the tears, because tears are just a release. So those tears help kind of, you know, clean this stuff out, and then you get to your true source, right? That's, that's where your heart is. So as you said, you found yourself, of course, because you gave yourself time to process what had been coming up finally, and then it could be released. As long as you pretend it isn't there, work around it or whatever, it still remains cloudy as it is. Now, we might be able to dress up the outside, but bottom line is, it's still there. And that's why it comes out in those weird times when we're not expecting it and we say, who said that? I was not myself, right? Haven't we all said that? Somebody pulls out on the freeway and we, mm, you know, and, and say those words or whatever. Um, and we say, my God, where did that come from? I'll tell you exactly where it came from, right here. Seventh grade. <laughs> right? <clears throat> the issues that you never have dealt with. So when we become willing to uh, do the spiritual work, what happens is um, spirit begins to show us in funny ways. Sometimes we get, what I call it is getting blocked. Spirit blocks us. You are blocked in being able to go where you needed to go because spirit needed you to do what you did. Period. You, you, it happened to me one time when I was in a group um, with one of my mentors. This is several years ago. And I had organized for all these ministers <clears throat> a retreat and, um, with my mentor. So it was the first part we were all getting together, and she gave everybody, like, this special gift. But me. <laughs> you know? and, 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 and I was kind of waiting, and, I, you know, and all of my childhood youngest, always left out, not enough, you know, it was like, you know, in my face. And, I, you know, I don't say anything. I'm, like, maintaining my center and everything. And then I pulled my mentor aside and I said, like, is everything okay between us? <laughs> I'm, like, suddenly I'm, like, three years old, you know. I'm, like, is everything okay? Like, I don't know, like, you didn't have a gift for me, <laughs> no? I didn't get my Prezi. You know, and I, here I am in all this instantly, Right? So, so she said, Alice, okay, spirit blocked me. There is one for you. I don't know where it is. It's picked out. I can tell you what it looks like. She was trying to convince me. You know, I had something for you. I feel as bad as you feel. Trust me. And, and it was like spirit blocked her so that could come up so I could heal it and be done. Right? So spirit sometimes will block whatever the situation is block the person, block you or whatever. It happens to me all the time here where I'll say hi to a group of people and I'll miss one just because there's 12 people and I'm like walking past. And the one person who has that wound will say, you didn't say hi to me. I'm going to leave the church because you didn't say hi to me. And I say, 
well, can we talk about it before you leave, you know, and see if we can find a place for healing, right? So sometimes we get blocked. I get blocked. You get blocked because spirit's having its way with you. Does that make sense? So if that happens and, and something comes up, begin to work with it instead of blaming somebody or staying there, you know, say, wow, what, what is for me, you know, in all of this? I don't know what's for me, but something is because this is not normal, right? So what you said is very, very important. Anybody else on the forgiveness work? How did that feel? How did the tithing go? How did any of that go? Is it fine for everybody this week? Yes. I'm just, I'm just going to say just a quick um, bit. I was doing some of the um, forgiveness work and, um, and something big, 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 big came up like a total shift and like I got to glimpse more of the iceberg and you know for years I've been taking prosperity classes and all this stuff and I'm like where's this coming from where's this coming from where's this coming from and then I got to see a glimpse of that of a little bit of where it was coming from I'm I'm like right in the middle of the process I'm not going to share too much but right but um, it's, it, it was huge. And the fact that, like, just coming here, like you said, you know, being here every day, being in this energy every day, right. being amongst people who speak the same language, who support you and you know and you can talk to and just having a casual conversation, something comes out and you're like, <gasps> oh, my God, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> uh huh. So you know, and 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 really, like having some of those core beliefs come up that you didn't even realize were driving your life, like right, huge, right, huge, huge. Thank you for sharing that. Let me just say a little bit about the iceberg, and then we'll get into tonight's uh, topic. But this is all good because it leads us right in because tonight's gratitude. Um, so the iceberg idea is that have you heard the phrase, you know, the tip of the iceberg? That's just the tip of the iceberg. So you know, uh, and you know. Um, icebergs can be quite powerful, obviously, right? Because that's what sank the Titanic, right? So, um, so under the water, so this is the water, just use your imagination here. Um, and this is like what the iceberg is like underneath, you know? So this is like how big, and here's like little flows, you know, that's coming down. So this is what you know about yourself. This is all that you don't know. This is all like um, subconsciousness. Notice the word sub, under, right? So subconsciousness. This is what's under your surface. So the work you did, the work you did, the forgiveness work I was asking you to do this week, it like takes a piece of this and brings it to the top and then it melts away. So it's like all of this work and that this whole course is to retrain your subconscious mind. You're healing what's in your subconscious, most of which you don't even know is there because it's been there so long you think that's the way it is. Does that make sense? Are you following that? So sometimes that's a helpful image to know that, yes, what you know is the tip of the iceberg, but look at all you don't know. So that's why we work with our thoughts and stay open to spirit because if there's something we're supposed to work on, that kind of comes to the surface and we go, oh, that's what that is, and that's what happened to you this week because I know a little of the story. That's what that is. So in your forgiveness work um, that you were doing hopefully this last week, um, as you continue to do it, and I was sharing this with Chris, you know, when you do it on a regular basis, you'll go, I don't have anybody to forgive anymore. Wonderful place to be. And then you'll go into meditation and a face will float up there and you say, I hadn't thought about you in 30 years. What are you doing here? You know. Um, and I told Chris, that happened to me, and I worked with it, and over, you know. But when it came up to my consciousness, it was like I knew where I was standing, what he said, what I said, how I felt, because I was so shamed, you know, that all that charge that I had dealt with was still hanging around, and I didn't know it, right? Because it was in my subconscious. Yes, Andrea. Let's get you the microphone, though. So you weren't here at the beginning when we said we're videotaping tonight, so we want to make sure everybody's heard. So go ahead. Okay. As you mentioned, the subconscious, um, I've been doing a lot of forgiveness work myself. But what I've found happening is that the, some of the emotional aspects of it is coming up in my dreams. Uh -huh. Are you from, is, is that something that tends to happen? Yes, it certainly can. 
the emotional aspects can come up in your dreams. And also remember, dreams are not literal in the way we think they are. Um, uh, I mean, sometimes they can be, but, you know, it's less than 10% of the time, let's say, if I had to give you a, a figure. Normally, in dreams, dreams are symbolic. They're um, archetypal, which means even if somebody we've had a difficulty with shows up in our dream, like if, if it's, let's say you're dreaming and it's a woman, I'm, I'm just making this up, even if it's a woman you've had a difficulty with, that woman probably represents a shadow piece in you. Yeah, because well, as you say, it's symbolic. Because yes. I had a dream that I had lost a purse or something. Yeah. And it seemed so real that I was dealing with the loss in the dream, but I woke up feeling the emotion of loss. Yes. And I realized that that is what I was feeling, but never really could put a word to it. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. So it was very healing for me to get in touch with that emotion. Good. I'm glad you're doing it. And if you can, to journal your dreams. I, I did. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. And, and the dream life is like, sometimes that's a place spirit can reach us. Again, it's also working with your subconscious mind, right? And it uses images that we know and are familiar with to help get us to a place. So um, often dreams are a way to work with our soul that totally bypass the personality. Because your personality can't stop the dream. It's happening in the dream state, right? So um, I, I've been learning a lot about dreams in the last couple of years. And uh, I'm thrilled to hear you're writing them down because it will really serve your process to do that. Because you'll see your growth. And, and sometimes you'll have a dream later and, and the, 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 the characters will change slightly. And you'll see the growth in yourself. So it's wonderful if you can have them uh, written down. And if you have kids... Write them down. My son and I uh, do his dream journal all the time. Um, let me just mention one thing, which is, uh, so thank you, Andrea, for mentioning that. Um, uh, I can't remember. Somebody asked for um, a volunteer form for the, um, for class. Was it you that mentioned it? Yeah, yeah thank you. Um, so we'll, uh, Roxanne will help me pass them out, but I wanted to mention it. No one has to fill this out. It says membership application because when you become a member, you get one of these. But it lists all the volunteer opportunities on the bottom. So you can just turn that into me at the end. And Oh, hey, right. Thank you for saying that. This Saturday, um, starting at 9, I'll be here with Josh. We'll, we'll be here for several hours in the morning. We're going to be painting in youth and family ministry. Paint's already been bought. All the materials are here. All you have to do is show up and labor, right? So that'd be a great one. So... Uh, maybe we'll start here and, yeah, I, th I said you, but we can do it ourselves, can't we? We're grown-ups. Okay, um, I asked a couple people to read so far um, in the night, but you know what we didn't do? Let's stand up for a second and do a meet and greet. Can we just say, um, as we greet one another in love, I am so grateful? I am so grateful. I'm so grateful. <laughs> That's a good, strong handshake. I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful for you. I'm grateful for you. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's enough gratitude. All right. We just needed a little break. We needed a stretch break. Oh. I'm so glad you guys. Oh, black history. You can't believe. I just talked to phone. He helped me get her number. She goes, oh, my God. Oh, sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, hold on. Two more quick comments. Michael has one and JJ has one. Hey, wait. Britt, 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 Britt. Michael and then... Oh, he's got one. Okay. Michael. Okay, so, yeah. <laughs> the microphone. Michael. So, you know, so we were talking about, you know, what do we think changed? And yeah. so one of the things was the shift in thinking. Right. The other thing, I just wanted to see if anybody else had as much fun as I did with creating your affirmation, right? So your prosperity affirmation that we did on week one. Yeah. So I went through three iterations. I kept, you know, and you know how you get to that point. It's like, oh, this is it. You know, so you come up with the words like, yep, this is it. And then like a couple hours later, you're like, oh, well, maybe I should put a little arrow and add another word there. It's like, okay, so now this is it. So I went through three iterations. And I ended up literally, like when I was driving out to Sanford for that meeting, I literally took your advice, 
I just kept repeating it. I actually ended up sort of making a song. It's like singing in the shower, but you're singing in the car, you know, your affirmation. I just did it constantly, the whole way there, and the whole way back. And, and so I just do it all the time now. It's crazy, but it's, it's awesome. Well, and then, and then I'm going to share, too, because we, we've been communicating uh, often because <laughs> it's like Michael's my new best friend on speed dial right now. He's helping me on a project. And so, and so I'll say something to him, and I'll say, you know, God is, our, God is your source. And that, he says, I can believe it. Okay, yes, that was a crazy thing. So my <laughs> affirmation statement is, God is my source of great prosperity in all forms now, right? So when I first, and so the so funny, she did not know that, right? I sent her some text about something we were working on. She writes back, God is your source. And I'm like, that's the beginning of my prosperity. You didn't know that. How'd you know that? <laughs> it was right. amazing. Yeah, it just, we're in the field. That's what you say psychologically. You're in the field, right? That's why when you come into the campus, some people will say, I got on this campus. I just, it was like love. And I say, oh. I'm thinking you're in the field. Okay, JJ, what were you going to say? I had a, a question to go back to the forgiveness for a second. You remember sure. when you said forgiveness you can do if, if you can't do it really, you can say, God, just do it through me. Yes. So if you do the God, uh, just do it through me. Um, like you had just said something about your example of someone floated up from 30 years ago, boom, what are you doing here? And then you yeah. did it and it's gone. Yes. Can, can you doing it, God doing it for you, go 100% or does it get you to 90 and the last 10 is on you? Oh, okay. Great question. It can, certainly. It can, certainly. No, that's a great question. Um, because the, the, the first time it happened for me, and it was so tremendous because uh, I was so humbled by the God power. I was sobbing. But it, it wasn't even like I had an opinion about it. it. It came through me and was given to this person who, let me just tell you, Ten minutes before, I would have sent straight to hell. I was not interested in forgiving this person, you know. And so, you know, it came through, and it was like, this is over. And so from that point on, for me, it was over. Now, did I have to deal with some of the emotional woundings from the person? Yes. But how I had been feeling like, you know, I want to take you out, I, you know. It's, it's uh, I mean, I'm being totally honest. When, when somebody's hurt you at a very young age, the, the woundings are it's so tremendous, and you want to try to get your power back. So thinking these things is totally normal and human, which is why I don't have any fear or shame about sharing them. It's normal. So, but yes, my experience of that is God moving through me just blew it out of the water. I, I you know, it was over. It was over. And, and certain things... Certain things take work, like there was another guy um, who I worked with who actually I loved, but I didn't realize at the time we were being pitted against each other by an executive director. So we were both ministers, and the executive director was going to him and saying things I said that weren't true. Then he was coming to me and saying things he said that weren't true. So we're, you know, and I mean, I seven-stepped him. I was forgiving him. I was doing, uh, thinking, my God, is it past lives? What is it? You know, oh, you know. I've forgiven this guy, but there was still a charge. Well, for one thing, it was still really current, his, you know, all the things. But then um, once I realized, like in this case, it was like, oh, you know what? I finally got it. This is not even my stuff. You know, I am making this up. You know, so whatever he's doing, this is his play. I'm a minor character, and I've made myself the star in his play. You know, so whatever he's doing, it's not even... And that was so freeing. So I didn't have to do any more forgiveness work, but the forgiveness work, like, got my consciousness working on it. So I learned a lot about myself in the process, but then the truth was it was over. Once I realized I've done everything I can do, there's nothing else I can do, boom, I could drop it. But I felt like because there was so much tension, there's got to be, I've got to be in this somehow. And once I dropped it, it was, it, it, it cleared the relationship. So it's like, Every situation is different, but can it clear 100%? Absolutely. I mean, God can do anything, really. Absolutely. That would be a wonderful affirmation. You know, God clears everything in me now. I forgive my past totally and completely. I forgive anyone who's hurt me. Sometimes I just do a blanket. I forgive everyone for everything, every moment. Just, just you know, that's my, the best prayer I learned from my son Joshua. You know, yeah, yeah. And we're going to do a practice in here tonight. He and I did earlier today to set the energy for the class, and it's why it feels... 
I hope you noticed it, and if you didn't, I'm telling you, it felt good when you walked in. Um, are you hot again? I am, but is it maybe? No, is it warm again in here? Okay, yeah, maybe you turn it down a bit. My energy is always so hot when I'm doing things like this. I'm never a good... Um, Okay, let's look at the curriculum starting on page 40. Um, I'll read the first little bit here, and then I have a, asked a couple people, who would like to read the Luke uh, scripture? I don't think I asked anybody to read the Luke scripture yet. Luke 9. So, so far, I think Greg is reading the Matthew. Jenny, are you reading the Mark? Or no, 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 I'm sorry. Maria is reading the Mark. Uh, Jenny, do you want to read the Luke 9, 10 through 17? Just find, if you'll find that one. And then somebody else can read John. Who wants to read John? Okay, Chris will read John. Okay, so let me just start at the beginning. So um, this is part three. Tonight is on gratitude. And it's going to be easy to get there, right, after all the sharing. Um, here's what it says. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting tides. Gratitude is the great multiplier. Gratitude is something we can do easily and effortlessly. Gratitude is good for the mind, body, and soul. Gratitude blesses the one who is grateful and the recipient of that gratitude. Gratitude creates prosperity. Gratitude creates, uh, sorry, gratitude works miracles. There is a story about gratitude in our scriptures and it exists in all four Gospels. So the first one Greg's going to read is from Matthew 14, 13 through 21. Feeding the 5,000. Now when Jesus heard this, he withdrew from there in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd and he had compassion for it. them and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away so that they may go into the village and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. They replied, We have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And he said, Bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowd to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to the heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples. And the disciples gave them to the crowds. And all ate and were filled. And they took up what was left over of broken pieces, 12 baskets full. And those who ate were about 5,000 men besides women and children. Excellent. Okay, next one, Mark six, thirty through 44, I think. Then the apostles gathered to Jesus and told him all things, both what they had done and what they had taught. And he said to them, Come aside by yourselves to a deserted place and rest a while. For there were many coming and going, and they did not even have time to eat. So they departed to the deserted place in the boat, in the boat by themselves. But the multitude saw them departing, and many knew him and ran there on foot from all the cities. They arrived before them and came together to him. And Jesus, when he came out, saw a great multitude and moved with compassion for them, because they were like sheep not having a shepherd. So he began to teach them many things. When the day was now far spent, his disciples came to him and said, this is a deserted place, and already the hour is late. Send them away that they may go into the surrounding countries and villages and buy themselves bread, for they have nothing to eat. But he answered and said to them, You give them something to eat. And they said to him, Shall we go and buy two hundred denarii worth of bread and give them something to eat? But he said to them, How many loaves do you have? Go and see. And when they found out, they said, five and two fish. Then he commanded them to. Make them all sit down in groups on the green grass. 
So they sat down in ranks, in hundreds and in fifties. And when he, and when he had taken the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to the heavens, blessed and broke the loaves, and gave them to his disciples to set before them. And the two fish he divided among them all. So they all ate and were filled, and they all took up twelve baskets full of fragrance and of the fish. Now they who had eaten the loaves were about to about five thousand men. Great. Okay, thank you. And the next one is Luke nine, ten through seventeen. Jesus feeds the five thousand. When the apostles returned, they reported to Jesus what they had done. Then he took them with him, and they withdrew by themselves to a town called Bethsaida. But the crowds learned about it and followed him. He welcomed them and spoke to them about the kingdom of God and healed those who needed healing. Late in the afternoon, the twelve came to him and said, Send the crowd away so they can go to the surrounding villages and countryside and find food and lodging, because we are in a remote place here. He replied, You give them something to eat. They answered, We only have five loaves of bread and two fish, unless we go and buy food for all this crowd. About 5,000 men were there. But he said to his disciples, Have them sit down in groups of about 50 each. The disciples did so, and everyone sat down. Taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to the heaven, to the heaven he gave thanks and broke them. Then he gave them to the disciples to set before the people. They all ate and were satisfied. And the disciples picked up 12 basketfuls of broken pieces that were left over. Great. Thank you. Last one, John 6, 1 through 14. After this, Jesus went to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, also called the Sea of Tiberias. A large crowd kept following him because they saw the signs that he was doing for the sick. Jesus went up the mountain and sat down there with his disciples. Now the Passover, the festival of the Jews, was near. When he looked up and saw a large crowd coming toward him, Jesus said to Philip, Where are we to buy bread for these people to eat? He said this to test him, for he himself knew what he was going to do. Philip answered him, Six months' wages would not buy enough bread for each of them to get a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon, Peter's brother, said to him, there is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fishes, two fish. But what are they among so many people? Jesus said, make the people sit down. Now there was a great deal of grass in the place, so they sat down, about 5,000 in all. Then Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated, so also the fish, as much as they wanted. When they were satisfied, he told his disciples, Gather up the fragments left over so that nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up, and from the fragments of the five barley loaves left by those who had eaten, they filled 12 baskets. When the people saw the sign that he had done, they began to say, This is indeed the prophet who is to come into the world. All right, beautiful, beautiful. So what it says in our curriculum right below that, this is amazing. The birth of Jesus <clears throat> is not even in all four Gospels. What is the story? It is the miraculous feeding of the 5,000. In each Gospel, the story is basically the same. This is also thought-provoking. Even in the birth story, there are no two stories that are quite alike. This signals to us there is something of vast importance in the teaching and telling of this story. Oh, sorry, I say we will read each one now. Oh, well. Uh, noting the similarities and in the increase that happens from the use of gratitude and the acknowledgement of God as source. What is common in each of these stories? In each one, Jesus took what was available, five loaves and two fishes, held it up, acknowledging God as source, and blessed it or gave thanks, as we are told in John's Gospel. We are also told that all were fed and there were 12 baskets left. The miracle satisfied the people in knowing this is indeed the prophet who has come into the world. All right, so I want you to take a minute just to share in partners um, either how you have been using gratitude or will be using gratitude because we've already heard some of that a little bit right tonight. But maybe now that you're thinking about it and you've heard some, some stories, remember as you share that it's about taking what you have and blessing it. Okay, so like 
if your job you're working on and you have an affirmation about job then, right, is giving thanks for the job in advance, right? So it's about acknowledging God and the source in all things. So take a minute just to share with one other person either how you've been using it or how you will be using it now that you've heard some of the stories tonight. Take a minute to do that. Assignments about gratitude. You're going to have a lot of assignments this week to, to practice your gratitude. We'll go over those in a minute. Yes. Just say the question and I'll repeat it if it's short. Um, so I, it's not a question. I just, it was really cool oh. that Dorothy um, brought up the fact that people are very short. Sure, okay. Oh, yes. Yes. So, yeah, Britt's sharing that Dorothy shared for everybody watching to, uh, to learn to be grateful for the difficult things. Well, the learning is always in the difficult things. Everybody wants life to be perfect, and I'm right up there. Hey, I love a sunny day at the beach, you know, but, but life's greatest learnings come from the difficulties and, um, and how we handle them, right? So, um, good point, Dorothy Moore. See, that's why she's ahead of our chaplain program. She can help people have a context for what's happening in their world and see what's possible out of what seems to be at the moment a royal mess sometimes, right? So seeing something good out of difficulty is, is a gift. All right, so let's look a little more at the story. In the, on page 41 it says, um, and, and other people can help me read. I'll just read the next little bit and I'll have somebody else read. There are many deep, many deep lessons in this familiar story. And the following steps are the formula for experiencing increase in your life. These steps were taught, demonstrated, and mastered by our brother and way shower, Jesus the Christ. The metaphysical teaching of the scripture is this, and you're on. All right, Mama, go ahead. Jesus represents the Christ in us. That Christ, that God, part of us, always knows there is enough. That Christ self tells our thoughts, the people, multitudes, disciples, to sit down. In other words, stop your worrying and complaining. There is enough. I got this. The Christ in you is telling you eotic, egoic, egoic, limited self of you, the truth. Then the Christ takes the loaves and fishes or the substance and ideas from a young boy. Note here that there were five loaves and two fish. Five plus, five plus two equals seven. Seven is the metaphysical number of creation. So we learn that substance and ideas combined create. Combined create. Numbers in scripture are significant. Now, back to the young boy. The young boy is... Our innocence full of ideas, imagination, and substance. The innocence, or even our inner child, easily trusts the Christ in us to take a, the little we have and make it more. The Christ then acknowledges we're all that good. We're all that good. We're all that good. We're all that good. Oh, we're all that good. However small it may seem, came from in the first place. The Christ says, thank you, acknowledging God, and then allows it to multiply. There is faith, faith in the multiplication. Okay, good. Thank you. Stop right there. Nice reading. Um, did you remember Sunday, you all, when I was speaking about um, um, mastery? And in, in 11 o'clock anyway, at one point I said, um, imagine with all your imagination like a little child might. Do you remember that? That I am a master? There's this part in us that's so pure and is willing to believe in something amazing. That's the part we want to contact as we're doing this work. That part that still has that little spark to believe. Um, <laughs> I was doing this show once and there were all these buttons, I believe in fairies, you know, and all the kids really liked it. You know, it's like, do you believe anymore that there's something magical that can happen to you? Right? We all have that kid part. It's the part of us that loves those sweet movies. You know? It's the part of us that says, you know, when we see a little baby, this is, oh, you know. The part of us when we see a puppy, we say, oh, look at that puppy. You know, right? It's that part of us that says, you know what, little guy? You can do that. 
right? You, you, you can do that. So then we begin to apply that principle, though, to our adult lives, right? That's the idea because so in the story, what I love about, you know, in every case, you know, Jesus is going, y'all, okay, just sit down, you know, sit, sit down. I, I tell you what, you, you guys are in your thoughts all the time. I'm in with source, so you guys sit down and I'm going to take care of it. That's the Christ in you that knows. I know we read that, but I'm saying it because it's not normal to look at a scripture that way. It's like that Christ self that we see in Jesus, that's the, you have that potential in you. That's the part of you that says, you know what? I know it looks weird, but I'm just going to give thanks that I have my job anyway. You know, I'm going to, even though I can't go to my job, I'm going to show up at church and work anyway. You know, I'm going to just move forward as if this is, you know, this is happening. And some people in the class, I'm sure, because this happens in every class, one of their goals for prosperity is reconciliation with a child or better relationship uh, with their children or spouse or whatever or even attracting a partner. The part of us that believes that's possible, that's what we want to contact. And that's what we want to stay in touch with as we're trying to bring these things into manifestation. And that's where we want to give gratitude from. And as we get to the assignments for the week, you'll see what I mean. Not like, thank you, God, for this. Thank you, God, for that. That's so, like, over. You know, that, that's, like, that's like, you know, we teach that to kids in Sunday school, and that's wonderful. But, like, it's deeper than that. It's like, you want to say things like, uh, and we'll get to it, but I, I have to say it right now. Thank you, God, for clothing me in your uh, radiant substance. I mean, these are the kind of gratitudes we want to bring on. Not like, I mean, thank you, God, for my clothes. Fine, start there. Start there. But we don't end with that. We want to de this is about deepening our understanding of our spiritual self, right? So that's what the gratitude, where, where we want to come from as I'm, speaking about it as it relates to this story. And to me, this story's cool because it's the only story that I know of that's in every single gospel. Why would that be true, right? Because when we, when we have faith in God as source, we bless the thing we have and have faith in the multiplication, it happens. It's, it's a law. It has to happen, right? So if for some reason you're doing all the stuff and it's not happening, well, then there's something blocking the flow. Then that's where your work is. But this is the law, and we know it because it's in all four Gospels almost the exact same way. There's even another story called the feeding of the 4,000, right? So it's, it's like, get this, people. This is, this is important. Okay, uh, maybe I just said everything in the book. I, I cannot, it's hard for me to stay on the book. Okay, this story teaches us that no matter how little we feel we have to work with, if we trust our innocence in the Christ in us, acknowledging God as source, and having faith in the multiplication we will see increase. In our lives, we will see increase in who we are, what we experience, and an overall abundance in whatever area of life. We practice these principles and trust God in the process. The feeding of the 5,000 is a story of miraculous increase. Let us study this formula and apply it so, that, so we may have so much abundance that there's plenty left over. And by the way, that's my favorite part of the story. There's enough left over. Twelve baskets and 12 in the scriptures, well, there, it's 1 plus 2, which equals 3, but it's also 12. The number 12 is like spiritual completion, you know? And so you'll see that. People tell me this, too. People tell me once they start tithing, it's, they'll say, it's really weird. It's funny math. I say, I know. They say, it's funny math. They say, I'm tithing 10%, but I have more than I have left over when I wasn't tithing. I say, I know. It's because these unexpected things aren't coming up, and things that you would normally pay for get given to you, and so God works it out. You know, God's working it out. So, so we'll look at the formula for increase. I'm going to talk a little bit about the homework, and then we're going to do an exercise and then end with a gratitude meditation because I really want to end with that based on these steps. Um, but, but this is what I'm going to take you through in the meditation. I just want to make sure it makes sense to you. So the gratitude formula for increase, number one, take inventory of what you have. So in whatever area you're looking for, this is, what, this is the project, okay? Two, have your thoughts sit down. In other words, sit quietly, clearing your mind of all thoughts of there's not enough. Like, let's say it's a partner you're looking for. I'll never have a partner. No, that one's got to go. That one, that's the one that's got to sit down. That's the one, okay? Then meditate, breathe slowly in a state of relaxation. So, in other words, you're clearing your mind of anything to the negative 
of what you're wanting to bring in. Or if it's a job, how come I can't ever have a job? Nope, lose that one. Okay, number three, put the Christ in you in charge. That's when, as you're sitting, meditating, and hopefully you're doing these readings, the way the book says, which is to, you know, light a candle, spend a few moments. So when you're doing that and you're breathing, you say, I call forth the God in me, the Christ in me, whatever word you want to use, to be present now. You call it forth. Command it to come forth. Right? You're in charge. And then number four, trust your childlike innocence and outlook. Show your higher self what you have, however small it may seem. So it's like, it's like I am image that my bringing my stuff to God. You know, like I'm giving you... And, and this is sometimes when I get frustrated. It's not always from my Christ self, but in my, in my frustration sometimes I will say, all right, God, here's the deal. I'll come in here. This has happened a couple times. If I was having to make payroll and there wasn't the money in the bank and I'm saying... You know what? <laughs> this is what I'll say. I'll say, you know what? I've given my entire life to you. Like, I cannot do any more, so you're just going to have to bring it. That's all there is to it. Because, I, I, I mean, I, we, 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 we don't spend, we don't overspend. Like, I'm telling you, God, all this. We don't overspend. We're tithing. We're forgiving. What? You know, and so I'm saying, so then I say, you know what? It's done. And then by the end, I'm going, God, there is enough. There's enough. You know, and so I finally, sometimes it takes me a while to get to the Christ self. And then more than once, I have left over here and gone over there, and somebody will say, I just checked the mailbox, and there was a check for $5,000. <laughs> you know, I mean, or it's in the next day or the next week or whatever. So it's like I know it's available always. And so it gets, if, if, if ever I see a decrease, or there's, and it's normal in ministry to have this, so that's no problem. But if I see like a big dip, I go, all right, something is off. Right, so then this is kind of the basic formula to use. That's what I'm saying. Does that make sense to everybody? Okay, all right. Um, so then, you know, so I say, okay, I know we have this much and we've invested. What else can we do with what we have? Are we giving it away enough? That kind of thing. Okay, um, and then number five, offer what you have to God. And remember, prosperity is wherever you are, right? Not, we don't give what we have to God and that means we lose it. No, it means it increases. So six, give thanks for what you have and bless it. So you're saying, God, this is what I have. I'm so grateful. Thank you. I bless everything that I have. And then, and then you rest, right? Seven is rest. On the seventh day, God rested, right? So then we watch the great multiplier at work. Jesus didn't go around and keep blessing everything. He blessed it one time, right? He didn't say, y'all keep blessing it, y'all keep blessing it and everything, right? It was like, bless it, it's done, right? Faith in the increase, faith in the increase. It's it's an important, it's so, so, such a simple lesson, really. I mean, I only chose one story for the whole week because you could spend hours on it. There's so much in that story. Okay, so everybody's understanding the, the vibe and kind of what we're heading towards with this, right? So on the next page where it says weekly assignment, and by the I forgot to do the reading at the beginning of class. Is everybody doing the readings? I hope you are, the, the daily readings. <clears throat> um, all right, so, so this says um, bless, every, uh, bless everything you have. And there's a bunch of, there's a bunch of sections, and, and it starts with your body. So um, start with your body every night in bed. Bless each part of your body. Thank God for each part. So here's why we do this. Everything we bless, remember, we're honoring. It puts us in, in alignment with the universe, right, when we're calling it good and we're blessing it. So especially if you have a health challenge, you should be blessing every part of your body every night. Yes. Just, just keep one camped out by Brit. Why not you? I, I just want to say about that. Um, if, if you are in a relationship, to if we've done this where like I will bless each little tiny part of her body, and it does oh, amazing things for you know for her body, for my body, our relationship, the intimacy, like everything. Oh, everything! It's if awesome. you're, can you imagine and if you were blessing too. your partner's body? I mean, beautiful. It's a great way to bring God into the relationship. A great way. Yes, right. And, um, and <clears throat> Myrtle Fillmore, you know, Unity's co-founder, really literally healed herself of, uh, I mean, herself. God healed her. But, I mean, through her affirmative work. And one of the things she did, every day she blessed every part of her body. And so <clears throat> a lot of times when I'm doing it, like I have one way of blessing my body and relaxing to meditate and another way to go to sleep or else I start going to sleep when I should be meditating and vice versa. So... Um, uh, when I meditate, like I'm always relaxing my body starting from here down and what I do is I'm like giving thanks 
you know, and blessing it as I relax. Well, when I go to sleep, I start from my feet and go up. It's just, and sometimes I, I don't get all the way and I'm asleep and, and I'm out. But it's a great way to like kind of take you into the dream time because it's positive and it's affirmative and it's blessing what you have. Right, so it's moved me out of many physical uh, things. So anyway, so that's the first one. The next one is bless your wallet and checkbook and what's in it and thank God for what you have. So here's what we do. We, we go like this. We say, oh, my gosh, I do not have enough money. Oh, my God, I don't have enough money. I don't have enough money. Right, we, we literally sometimes, I mean, I've done that. Have you all held your wallet and thought that? There is not, where's my, where's my, you know. Instead of saying, my wallet is full of God's substance. There is enough for me in here, right? I bless every dollar, every penny, every five, every 50, every hundred, every credit card. Thank you, God. God's substance fills my wallet. And God knows that that means money. You can say, money fills my wallet. Don't worry about saying the word money. God knows what that is too, right? So... You know, nothing to be ashamed of about money, right? So, right, literally take out your wallet, especially if it's financial, and start to bless it. You are creating an energy. That's what you're trying to do, right, a flow in your life. And I'm telling you, lately I have been doing my part to support the economy. Uh, money has been flowing out, and I'm blessing every, every spending that I'm doing, and it is coming back in weird ways. Yes? Important or how important is it to carry cash in your wallet as well as cards? That's a good question. I love cash. I feel so wealthy when I carry it. I, I learned this from the guy on the board. Um, well, I've always liked to carry cash, but um, this guy um, on my board in Phoenix, there was an um, expense thing we had to do, and everybody had to give like $100. I can't remember. It was some resort. You know, Phoenix, there's resorts everywhere, and everybody always wanted to go to these resorts. So anyway, and everybody said, okay, you know, let's chip in 100 each because... You know, church that won't have to pay so much, whatever. So anyway, this guy, um, Mike is his name, and he goes, okay, bam. You know, he pulls out a beaner, you know, and I, I said, that's a $100 bill there, brother. He goes, I always carry a 1000 I said, really, do you? He goes, I feel so prosperous when I do that. He's, you know, millionaire, millionaire. I mean, just, he is in the flow. So he always had money in his wallet. He goes, you never know when you need $1,000. And I, and I said, you know, you're absolutely right. You are absolutely right. And it's funny how I've been able to help somebody else that needed it or how uh, maybe I'll buy somebody's groceries behind me. Or, and, and, and I never feel like I'm, I, I'm giving more than like I can afford. It's like, I've got this. You know what I'm saying? So I love cash. I also think plastic is for the banks to make more money. Uh, I'm kind of not really a fan of banks because... Ever, all those systems are so they make money. They're not to help the consumer. You've got to be on top of it and write every single re receipt down and all that jazz. So um, I do, I try to do very little credit on almost all cash. So, I mean, obviously now you buy iTunes, it's a credit card. You do this, it's a credit card, you know. Um, and recently I had somebody steal my number anyway. So, you know, then you have that to deal with. So, you know. Anyway, um, so yeah, cash for me, um, but you also have to know how to budget. You can't spend every little dollar if you're on a budget just because you're feeling prosperous. So you have to know what works for you. But most people overspend on a card, not with cash. Right, most people overspend with a card. That's my experience. Well, I mean, you cash, you see it going out. My God, that's a 5-0, you know. And like if you're grocery shopping, that's a great way to buy, to limit your budget, to limit what you're buying because you say, well, I've only got 300 in here. And so like if I'm counseling people, I put them on the envelope system where they only spend cash and they make categories. I, I say tear up the credit cards. Yeah, you don't work with me. You just don't even, if you're going to keep, you know, piling up credit cards, my work with you is over because it's completely contrary to the teaching. You know, there's such a thing as secure debt. That's, that's biblical. But all this unsecured debt that we have right now is, is, is so far out of balance, uh, really. The average American, what was it? Uh, I mean, it's like, I think now it's up to like it's $60,000 in debt, which doesn't include a car or a house. So that's how far I think the national average is up to. Yes.
Correct. You are, and, and the way the credit card companies go after students is really amazing. Is that what you're going to say? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Well, you, if you sign her up for LifeLock, I don't know if you guys know about LifeLock. Is what? I should be illegal. If you sign up for LifeLock, which is identity uh, theft protection, they will stop the uh, they'll stop the credit card companies from sending you. Mm -hmm. I believe it. I believe. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I'm sorry. Online banking. I'm sorry. Yes. Okay, next one. Um, we could talk all night just about that one. Okay, as you, as you dress, acknowledge and give thanks for the clothes you have and that you're being clothed in the radiant substance of God. That's what I said before. Thank you, God, for your clothes is wonderful, for God energy is even better. And I will tell you, I have done this. I mean, this is so funny. One Sunday, you know, I get a lot of comments often just because people are always projecting onto the minister. They cannot help themselves, you know, with what I wear or don't wear or whatever. So, so, so one Sunday, I had just done the affirmation before I left my office. I am clothed in the radiant spirit of God. You know, I fairly sizzle with zeal and enthusiasm to do the work that ought to be done by me. I mean, I was working it. And I walk in and this woman goes, you're radiant. I said, thank you. You know, I was like, you know, I had really, I'm sizzling. I, I, got, I was just gotten into the flow and I had an immediate you know, in immediate affirmation. So, so yeah, so you want to get into the idea of being clothed in the substance of God, which, of course, is total abundance and prosperity. I don't need to think about Nordstrom's or Neiman Marcus. I'm, you know, I'm covered. Okay, as you drive to work, give thanks for the car, gas in your car and the car you drive. If any feelings of not enough come up here, tell them, get out of the car. There is only abundance here. Remember, get out of the car, Lack. So you're, if you need a new car... Thank you, God, for this car I have. Thank you, God. Um, this friend of mine was thinking about getting a new car, and um, he was a minister. So he was, like, driving down the road, and he had his little daughter in the back. And all of a sudden, he's at a red light, and he's sitting there, and this woman just, like, barrels, you know, into him. And he's worried. his daughter's laughing. He starts laughing. He goes, God, surprise me with the blessing in this. This is, you know. Of course, the tar qu car's total, and he gets a brand-new car. So in his affirmation, he'd, he's, he'd been using was, this can only bless me. <laughs> this can only bless me. Whatever happened, this can only bless me. So literally, his daughter, she's like 16 now, they still remember that as when they, the day they got a new car, even though it wasn't that day. It was like, we're praying for a new car. We're saying this can only bless me. And he, he said, I've never laughed when another car hit me. But I knew it, there was something divine about it. All right, so you guys, okay, after work, uh, give thanks for the job you have and affirm you are working for God. In other words, not for the boss, not for the company, you're working for God. Okay, at home, give thanks for those and to those that love you. Share your gratitude practice with them. Let them know uh, how happy you are they are in your life. If you live alone, call your friends or family members to do the same. At your church, thank the people that support you and make a difference in your life. In other words... You just want to be all the time in an attitude of gratitude. Is that making sense to everyone? Now, we're going to go probably over a little bit tonight, I just realized. Is that okay? Over time, a few minutes. Because I really want to do the meditation. Um, and I really want to do the, the, the practice. So here's what Joshua and I did. And we can all take a section, if you want, um, in, in the pews. What Joshua and I did, and we didn't... It was funny because I... When he said it, I thought, well, we have enough gratitudes. We went and blessed each pew. He was on that side, and I was on this side. This is with my son, Josh, who's seven. And each of us said a gratitude, and we did every pew. I was so touched at his gratitudes, I can't tell you. And then what mine would bring up in him and what his would bring up in me. So as we do it...